black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he, was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? See ya. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. Uh, Before we get down to business, someone actually sent this to me on Facebook, and uh, it just made me laugh. I busted out laughing when I first saw this. It's a teacher and a student waiting for the principal to show up. And those boys were just being stupid, so don't worry about it and go back to class. You said a bad word. Stupid. I'm telling Ms. Walsh. Oh. You hear that? What's that? Said a bad word, and John is going to tell on me. Oh, I see. And what word did he say, dear? He said asshole. Jerry, are you kidding me? I never said that. Why would I lie? Why would he lie? I don't know why you would lie. I'm so sorry that he said that to you. But you know, sometimes Mr. Duncan can be a bit of a... What's that word again, dear? Asshole. Yeah, that's the one. I don't appreciate this. I'm not a douchebag. <gasps> Jerry! I never said that. He is five years old. What's the matter with you? You think I would call him a douchebag? Get out of my office. I thought it was hilarious. I'm sure I'll have a bunch of emails from Bigfoot researchers on Monday. Come on, Wayus, you're playing jokes on your show. Science is never going to take us serious. Relax. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. We're going to be talking to Tim. And Tim comes to us from uh, Florida. He actually had an encounter with one of these things when he was very young. It approached his window, and he's had other several things happen throughout his life we'll be talking about tonight. And Tim's also a truck driver. I know he's driving right now, so you might hear some of the truck in the background. Uh, But one question I'm going to ask Tim is, what is the strangest thing he's ever seen? Uh, So many truck drivers see so many weird things. And then we'll chat with John, and John had an encounter at his grandfather's home in West Virginia. Again, this was many years back. Him and his brother had actually seen this creature. Uh, Fascinating, fascinating accounts. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome John to the show. John, thanks for being here. Hey, it's my pleasure. And I know you and your brother actually had an encounter out there in uh, West Virginia. If you would, John, would you tell us what you were doing and walk us into what happened? We lived in Wisconsin back in the 70s where I grew up. And uh, we would take uh, vacations to my grandpa's house. He lived uh, way down in Calhoun County, West Virginia, which is near the town of Grantsville. And he lived way up in the hills. And uh, he you know, he had a small house. It was kind of a, was it kind of a modest home. And... Uh, he had built an addition to the home. It, did, it had one window in the addition, but it didn't have any screen or anything in it. And uh, 
we went there when it was back in 1970, I believe it was. And, uh, it was in the evening. It was about eight thirty, nine o'clock at night. And uh, my mom had just kind of washed him up. He was one of the first ones to go to bed that night. And, uh, uh, it was only about 15 minutes later after he went to bed, after she had put him to bed, that he came flying out of the be- bedroom, and uh, he was f- physically uh, upset. You can see that he was scared. And he had told me that he had seen what he called, quote-unquote, a werewolf in the window. <laughs> so, you know, and uh, I could tell he was upset that he was telling the truth, that he wasn't making this up. So, and uh, as kids do, you know, I, I don't know. We wanted to see this thing. <laughs> so we go flying out the front door and around the corner. And all my dad, my uncles, and all of them are sitting on the front porch, you know, talking. And, you know, timing is everything, Wes. And we, I come around the corner. And about that time, the car, there was a car that came down the hill with a, you know, and uh, my grandpa had aluminum siding on his house. It was white. And any time a car would come down that hill, it would kind of illuminate the whole area for a while, for, for just maybe a few seconds. And when it did, we seen something bipedal. I, it, we didn't, I couldn't tell the height of it. I knew it was kind of a blackish gray color. But other than that, we just saw, if you would turn your back to me about from the shoulders up, we saw it go down the embankment. There was an embankment next to the back of his house that it had went down. And uh, what I remember the most about it was, you know, it only, like I said, we only seen it for a few seconds. And... Um, just the noise this thing made going through those woods is like a bull elephant. I mean, he wasn't given a care whether you heard him or not. And what I remember the most is at the bottom of this embankment, there was uh, a briar bush. And, uh, and um, when you're 10 years old, this briar bush was, you know, it looked impenetrable. It was like a great wall of China. You could not get through this thing. Uh, the, the thorns on this thing was enormous. Anyway, he blew that through that thing like it was nothing. You know, and that's really what, you know, astonished me when I was a kid, like, you know, because how in the world does this thing go through that? You know, because one second he's going down the embankment, the next second he is like off further off in the distance. You can hear him crashing through the woods, you know, and um, we didn't tell anybody. And, uh, you know, that night when we after we seen it and the next morning um, we got, you know, about 1030, we're out back. Me and my brother were, you know, talking about, you know, kind of exchanging notes as far as what we saw and this and that. And about that time, my uncle Donnie came in, he pulled in the driveway, he walks back toward where we were and he goes, what are you guys doing? And, you know, we proceeded to tell him exactly what each one of us seen that night, you know, and my brother had told him that this thing, he was just about to fall asleep and this thing, he heard this grunting noise and he seen, and he turned and his thing was sniffing the air and see, he had stuck its head inside the window and, you know, it scared the you-know-what out of him, so he get, he just flew out of that bed. He didn't even hesitate. He just got up and left, he said. And um, that's when he came out to the to the front room where I was. And um, we told my uncle exactly what we saw, what, what I said had seen, what he had seen and experienced. And, I mean, it was just like somebody had hit my my uncle in the stomach with a, you know, he just punched him in the stomach. His whole color left. His eyes got real big. He, like, like, he knew what we seen. You know, because he lived down there all his life, hunted those woods. My grandpa owned a bunch of land down there, and he had probably had seen, he had probably ran into these things at one time or another. He never told us that, but you could tell that he knew what we were talking about because we just described something to him that he knew that probably existed that we had, you know, we eight and 10 years old. What would we know about something like that? It wasn't until later on in life. You know, when we were, you know, 18, 19, we heard about these kind of things that we kind of put the story two and two together as far as what happened that night. You know, and he kind of put his arms around us, kind of lead us away from the, the edge of the embankment. And he said, you guys don't come back here no more. Uh, you guys go out front and play, you know, and he would, you could tell he the fear in his voice that he was serious, you know. And um, I often wondered Wes, whether or not he had said anything to my grandpa about it, you know, later on, you know, to kind of pull my grandma to the side and say, hey, this is what happened. You know, because like I said, my grandpa had a bunch, he had a sawmill down there and a bunch of land that, you know, him and probably my, my uncle hunted, you know, throughout the years. And, um, that's pretty much, you know, pretty much it. I just, you know, it was, it was something that, uh, got me interested into the subject and everything, you know, when, once I got older in life and I, I haven't made any contact with my uncle for a long time. We, you know, kind of lost contact. He lives way out in Ohio. So, um, like I said, I just, would like to ask him whether or not he had seen or had told my grandpa. I think my grandpa's no longer with me, you know, with us anymore. But 
it's 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 it was it was definitely life changing to say the least. Oh yeah, I can imagine. It reminds me of there's an encounter. I think it's when I had uh, Brenda Harris on. She's a Native American down there in kind of in the Southwest region, and there was an account. I swear it was Brenda that came on the show and talked about it, but um, where this couple was laying in bed. And kind of the same setup. They didn't really have a window, or I think they had the window open, but they didn't have a screen. It was hot. And uh, mm-hmm. this thing had popped its head in the window, looked right at them. You know, and obviously, yeah. you know, their normal reaction is to freak out. But what I find fascinating uh-huh. is your brother talking about, in the email you had wrote about how it was tasting the air. and and Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. He said, he said the thing was like... I don't know, like you were, you know, like you'd smack your lips or something, and it was, it was tongue was like a snake would taste the air. That's what he described. That's how he, what he that's how I assumed that, you know, that's what he was describing. And uh, to me, when I was ten, when he told me that, that gave me nightmares for a long time. And when he had said that, you know, it took a long time for me to, you know, and I'm sure it did him too. You know, he, you know. But, uh, yeah, he said it, it stuck its head in the window, and it, like I said, he said he was almost asleep, and this thing kind of, the noise it was making, the grunting noise or whatever it was, and he said he kind of rolled over and looked. <laughs> I, I can't even wrap my head around what that was like, you know, to see this thing. You know, he just said it would look like a werewolf, you know. But, uh, again, he was eight years old, and, you know, that's probably the closest thing to what it re- resembled, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so. I think a lot of people, I mean, I've had witnesses in the past. I just had one recently, and she said it reminded her of a werewolf. And then the more we got to talking, yeah. um, mm-hmm. I don't think it was like what people call the dog man. I think what she was really describing right. was back in the 60s and in the 50s, they'd have those werewolf movies where the guy turned into a werewolf. And, mm. you know, he's all hairy and... I think that's a, you know, so I could see your brother saying something like that. Did he say anything else as far as descriptions or I would imagine it was very brief and he got up and just ran out of the room. It's what I would have done. Yeah. Yeah. He, he didn't say, you know, he just, all I remember him saying is that it looked like a werewolf. And I don't know if that meant that he, it had teeth, you know, fangs or whatever, but he said that that's what it looked looked like. He said it, it looked like it was like he was, like the hair on the, on his face was wet. Like it was just came through a rainstorm. But the, the hair was real wet. And, uh, you know, but I don't ever remember it raining that night. You know, it was just a warm summer night. That's all I remember, you know. Yeah, and, and the other description he gives, one thing he says about his encounter that is very unique in the sense that it, I know he really saw it. Obviously, you saw it too. But if it was just your brother's mm-hmm. story and you hadn't seen it, one thing he says and I've heard from many hunters who are sitting in tree stands, they'll see these things from a distance walking up a trail and they will describe Mm -hmm. it sniffing the air. And I've had many hunters tell me it looked like it was tasting the air, like it was trying to not only smelling, but tasting the air. It's, it's an interesting part of that encounter, you know? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. He, uh, you know, it it upset him (laughs) to say the least. I mean, you know, like I said, he was eight years old and he was having nightmares for it, you know, from it for a while. And so was I, you know, as far as what I saw, but, uh, you know, I, what I, what I saw was just, you know, from the shoulders up as he was going down, it was bipedal, it was going down the embankment. And then, you know, that the hair was, you know, it was like, like I said, the only way I could describe it was like something out of an eighties rock band. I mean, the hair was just, you know, flowing, you know, but as it was going down the embankment, you know, and it was kind of a grayish black color, you know, and it was dark. It was, he didn't have, Grandpa didn't have any of these, you know, floodlights back then. You know, he had no lights at all outside other than a couple of bug lights he had on the front porch, you know. So when it got dark down there, it got dark. I mean, as soon as that sun set behind the mountains, you know, it got dark. So, um, you know, it, it, uh, we only seen it for a brief few seconds as that car passed and the headlights hit that, hit the, um, aluminum siding on the side of his house and it kind of illuminated the area for a second and like i said if it wasn't for that car was we wouldn't have seen it we wouldn't have even known what it was whether or not he what what he saw was what he saw you know what i mean so like i said timing is everything yeah it'd be nice to uh it's too bad your grandfather is gone no longer with us it'd be nice to uh yeah. or even your uncle for that matter it sounds like your uncle because you know the normal adult reaction is to go well you know you you probably Mm-hmm. You probably had a nightmare. You probably sure. didn't see what you saw. 
Uh, but for him right. to turn pale white, his eyes get real big and say, don't worry about he that. Did. You guys go play out here. Right. That makes me think right. he's seen it before. You know, that really makes me right. think he's well, seen it. Well, like I said, he, him and my other uncles hunted their, you know, that land forever, you know, since they could, they could walk practically. That's what you do when you grow up in West Virginia. You learn, first thing you learn to do is how to hunt and fish. So, you know, and he's still alive. He is alive. He lives in, he lives in Akron. And he still own my. He still he owns that property today, and uh, he owns the house. And when I talked to one of my cousins or, um, earlier this summer, that he he goes down there from time to time to check on the house. So I mean, I have not made any contact with him for a while, but uh, I would like to you know at least find out from him if he would even talk about it. You know, because like I said back then, he just you know. He didn't talk about it to me. He didn't say anything to me after that. He just told me, you know, you guys, you know, don't come back back in the back of the house no more. You guys go up front and play, you know, and he kind of, and that was it. He didn't want, but you can tell that what we described to him, we had no business knowing about, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, it, you know, little kids too, they tend to describe these things as wolf man, ape man, um, mm-hmm. you know, monkey bears, you know, they have all, they make up their own little name for them. Um, it's fascinating. Right. What, what do you think that Sasquatch is, John? I know it's this happened a long time ago. Well, but... you know, I, I I think it's you know, it ha- I think it's too human. It acts too human to be just just an ape. And do these things reason? These things, you know, you know, like I've heard all other people come on your show and they said, you know, they know what a gun is. They they don't know the mechanism of it or the mechanics of it as far as how it works and anything, but they know what it represents. And to me, that's, that's, I mean, you wouldn't, a bear wouldn't know, you know, any normal animal wouldn't know what that is, you know, and they wouldn't re- have that kind of reason. And, um, so I just think it's more human than what, uh, you know, some people just think it's just a monkey, you know, or just, you know, just an ape, but I think it's more than that. And that's, you know, I've heard rumors or not even rumors, but thoughts of other opinions that people think that the government's covering it up, you know, that's why nobody ever sees a picture. That's why nobody ever finds anything, you know, one, even though I know there are people that reportedly had shot him, you know, but for some reason they never make it to, you know, the media. And when you say more human, uh, John, do you mean like a primitive human? Is that like a Neanderthal? Is that what yeah. you mean? Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, there, you know, the, you know, there's, four four types of them from what I understand, you know. And uh some of them are more you know, you people just I have like I said, I didn't see the face on this one, but a lot of people say, you know, some of them look monkey like and then some of them look more human. Like they have the Down syndrome look on them. So I mean you have to wonder where that come from, you know, as far as you know, maybe it's you know, Gigantopithecus or something like that. You know, so I mean that's just my opinion. I, I you know, I've seen yeah. uh, I, a lot of documentaries on them and stuff and like most people say you know they come on your show and they say i'd like to see one but not close up you know <laughs> yeah. you know that's pretty much my that's pretty much my stance on it. you know i'd love to see one crossing the road and say and, and physically see yep there it is you know that's what i've seen you know but uh haven't hasn't happened yet yeah well i appreciate you sharing your opinion on it you know it's uh it's yeah. a fun question for me to ask you know it's fun to speculate because mm-hmm. no yeah. one no one really knows Anyone that tells you exactly yeah. what Sasquatch is, is probably lying to you. Well, yeah, especially if they're really not into it. It is just just some just a random opinion, you know. But um, they're they're out there. I mean, uh, just on a little side note, I had lived in uh, Tennessee back in 2001, and I was sitting on the front porch about 7:30, and it was just me. You know, the family wasn't home. And I had my dog on the front porch. He was a, he was a kind of a blue healer mix, and uh, he was a good dog. And um, it was like I said, about seven thirty. It was in the summertime, so it wasn't dark yet. And suddenly we heard that only what could be described as a uh, gorilla sound coming off to my to my left. There's a, a farm further down, maybe an eighth of a mile down, and we lived on a dead end. And it just made like a, ooh, ooh, you know, like a gorilla sound. And I thought okay, <laughs> what the heck is this, you know? So, and my dog, you know, he heard it and he stood up and he was, you could see the cackles on the back of his neck stand up. So, and I don't know if that's what it was, but Wes, I'm telling you, it sounded like an ape. Now there's no domestic animals that I know that this lady had down on the end of the farm down there 
that had that could make that sound. I didn't tell anybody that this is the first time I'm even telling you. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it happened just for a brief second. I didn't see anything, but, uh, you know, if my dog could talk, he could verify for me. It's not yeah. like a monkey to me, man. It's, you know, so yeah. Yeah. And you hear that a lot. I mean, I've heard that down in Texas where I thought, oh, that sounds like a monkey or that sounds like a, yeah, a, this, a great ape of some sort. That's exactly what this thing sounds like. Yeah. yeah it, it, it it made that little, ooh, ooh, you know, like a monkey and I can't even do it justice, but yeah, you know, so, I mean, it's, I've heard him and I've seen the, 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 a glimpse of one, which I think it was one back in, you know, back in 70 when I was a child, I was 10 years old at the time, you know, but, uh, you know, like I said, I'd, like to see one cross the road one day, you know, just just for just for, just to verify what I saw back then, you know. Yeah, and I understand that. I understand when you say that, John. I mean, I think anytime anyone gets a quick glimpse of it, they're like, "Gosh, I wish I could see the full thing," you know, and from a safe distance. Well, and um, yeah, it's like you get the you know, like it you get with the Bigfoot bug more or less. It's like you want to you want to look into it more. Um, you know, I, I've been reading about him, and ever since I was probably. You know, sixteen, seventeen. I've been, you know, studying these this kind of stuff. You know, and not just Bigfoot, but all kinds of paranormal stuff. You know, because well, you know where I grew up in Elk in Wisconsin. I grew up in Elkhorn, and that was famously known for, you know, the Beast of Bray Road. You know, I, I lived right behind that road when I was a child. I lived on Bowers Road, and you know, it's it. Uh, you know, everybody used to talk about it. You know, the farmers used to talk about you know, giant dog walking around killing livestock, but. We never seen anything back then, but uh, you know, I've I've been interested in that kind of stuff my whole life, really. Yeah, and I can understand that, especially after uh, man living a block away from or the next street over from Bray Road, and then seeing this. Yeah, it was kind of it was very it was very rural. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot yeah. that went on back then with that beast of Bray Road. I don't know so much it's being seen today, but I know back then it was definitely right. being seen a lot. Say you put the little town of Elkhorn on the map. <laughs> you know, you hit, you see these corny story, or these corny movies on, uh, you know, you know, TV about you know Beast of Bray, but it doesn't do it justice. I mean, it you know, it it's uh, they put the town on the map, but you know, and uh, people claim they've seen it. I you know, but I you know, I have not seen it, but you know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's famous for that, yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your encounters, John. Thank you so much. Hey, Wes. Hey, it's an honor, man. I, I love your show. Keep up the good work. Well, I want to welcome uh, Tim to the show. Tim, thanks for coming on. Glad to, glad to talk to you, Wes. Yeah, I'm glad to have you on. And I know uh, when you were younger, uh, you had an encounter. One of these things had come up to your window, and we could talk about some of the other strange uh, incidences that happened to you. Uh, but would you mind starting from the beginning? Kind of tell us about the area and and the night that you saw this thing. Yeah, um, it was probably I was six, about six years old, around 1970. Um, my earliest memories we. I grew up on a, a cattle ranch. It was it was it was a pretty good sized chunk of property. Um, probably n- no neighbors for you know ten miles. Uh, just a, a ranch house out in the middle out in the middle of big clear, and it was all pasture for several miles behind us. But there were thick woods all in front for six or seven miles, and and just just woods and uh, um, pretty isolated. It was a clear night in the summer. Uh, wind is open. You know, you could see the, I, I couldn't tell what phase of the moon it was, but it was bright. I could see the stars and the, the tops of the trees. And uh, I'm asleep, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, we had all the animals just went nuts. The the, the sheep had bells, and there was clang, 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 and, and chickens, and, you know, the horses, everything's going crazy. And uh, it wakes me up, and I'm I'm laying there just listening. I'm on the opposite wall from the window, probably 10 feet away, you know, laying in bed, looking up, out, up, seeing the tops of the trees out through the yard. And, uh, everything goes deadly silent. I mean, this goes on for, you know, a few minutes. It woke me up and it's it just, just loud. And, uh, uh, I, everything just went quiet. I mean, nothing. And all of a sudden I hear 
football. Don't, don't, don't. And this thing come up like it just came. It was like it was walking to my window. It came up to my window, and it it filled the whole window up. But at the angle, it was it. Uh, it seems like it was almost like looking down at me at an angle. Uh, like a 45 degree angle looking down at me and I, I couldn't, I could see the shape of the eyes. I couldn't really see, uh, any real facial features except it was, it had hair on its face, uh, like monkey, uh, thin, thin lips, like, like an ape. I, I don't recall ears. I think it was either, it was either dark gray or black. I, I, I don't know, but that the eyes were, uh, not like the, not like down syndrome, but the, that shape kind of like an almond shape of the eye. And, uh, it, the hair on its head was, I don't know, th- three or four inches long, but it seemed like it was longer on the shoulders. And, uh, it, I don't know. It, it's, it just seemed the way it just come up. It just scared me. I've had, night terrors i've had nightmares my whole life uh not as bad here in recently but you know i'm 55 years old it's, you know 49 years ago i've i've had just absolute ridiculous wake up everybody in the house screaming nightmares uh and I, but i can't remember anything that happened uh it was it was just looking like it i don't know it just it just looked like it it came right to my window like it had like it was supposed to be there. It just, just it stuck its head right on my screen. And, uh, it was, <clears throat> I thought it was growling, but it, now that I, I don't think it was growling, I think it was just moving so much air. It was so massive. It was, it was, it would breathe. You could hear it breathe in and it'd go only like seven or eight seconds long. And, uh, it just absolutely scared me to death. I, all I remember is trying to get under my mattress and then I woke up the next morning. So I, I have no idea what went on or, or anything. And, uh, I just, you know, I said, tell my parents like, Oh, Timmy, that was a, that was a cow or this is, I mean, the, the yard was fenced. There's no cows in the yard. And, uh, or it was this, or it was that. And, and, uh, uh, What's strange, you know, listening to your show, what what's really got me thinking, and, and what's really strange is I, you know, my parents and my brothers and sisters, they they've always made fun of me about, you know, uh, that I I have a vivid imagination because you know when I was little, my earliest, you know, back as far as I can remember, I always had a pet gorilla that lived under the house that I played with during the day, and it just makes me wonder if there's way more to this, to the, to the, the, you know, I don't really fall for the woo woo side of stuff like y'all call it, but it just makes me really wonder. And, um, another thing I think is really strange about my, my brother's past, uh, like three years ago, he died, but we spent a lot of time, one of my brothers, my next oldest brother, we spent a lot of time together as kids. And then we worked couple jobs together, you know, spent a lot of time at work and off work. And he always would do this little weird, we'd get to cutting up, you know, and he'd say, oh, just, just weird. And it, when he would do it, every time he'd do it, I would stop dead in my tracks. And I would think, why do you do that? And I'd, I'd ask him, why do you do that? He said, I don't know. I said, and it, sound, it sounded familiar to me. And I'd say, well, where'd you hear it? He said, I don't know. I said, what are you doing? He said, I don't know. I'm just being stupid. But it's that friggin' gibberish stuff that I've heard on some of these recordings you play. And it, it makes me wonder if they weren't around the house, if they weren't, you know, and, you know, he, something he heard at night that he just was mimicking, you know, in his sleep. Cause he, none of my, nobody in my family's ever seen anything. And they've always said, you know, my brother's a preacher. And when he talks about me from the pulpit, he said, Oh, you know, my brother Timmy, the one seen Bigfoot. And it's like, ha ah, ha you know, it's the big joke. <laughs> so they, nobody ever seen anything, and I've I've had to deal with the, you know, the same ridicule and poking fun. It's too bad that it's like that because I think that um, some of the best witnesses I've ever talked to were little kids. 
uh, where they have way too many details. It either goes one of two ways. Uh, kid, they'll come up to the window and the kids are interested by it and they'll sit and they'll just look at the thing and it'll sit and look at them. Or the kid will freak out like what you said. You know, you said one thing in there that really uh, I've heard from people who are adults now that recount what happened to them as kids with these things coming up to their window. And they'll say, you know, last thing I remember as I ran into bed and I was pulling the covers over my head and that was it. Or in your case, you were trying to get underneath your mattress. Um, you know, that shows you were scared at that time. Uh, later in life, you guys went and saw a movie or something, and you were telling your mom yeah. that that's what I saw. Yeah, I, I, I stuck to my story. You know, I, I tell them I saw it. There's something I saw it, you know. And, and when somebody would say, I'd say, I, there, was, there was something at my window. You know, they'd say, oh, yeah, he saw something. You know, it was probably, the, and, you know, he's, you know, he's, He's he's scared, you know. I wouldn't go outside at night without, you know, somebody there, you know. And uh, yeah, he's scared. He said he saw something, you know. That's just all that stuff. And uh, we went, we went and saw the Legend of Boggy Creek. I guess I was nine or ten years old. As soon as I saw, you know, the hairy arm and the, you know, the out, I said that's that's what was in my window. My mom was like, "Stop it! I don't that you're scaring me to death. Stop it! That you didn't see that." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's that's what was in my window." that right there and uh only the one i saw the my dad the it was an old style uh frame wood frame house they call them cracker houses down here they used to have the breezeway and and you know uh back in the 1800s so that they'd catch the breeze and it'd be a little bit cooler you know living in florida without air conditioning you need all the help you can get and so they it was but it was up it was kind of a flood prone area so it was up on concrete pylons and at that age, I, I could just lean my head over a little bit, and I could look all the way under the house, like looking for the dog or something. Well, when my dad would be outside, he's, his nose would come up to the bottom of that window. Well, this thing filled it up. I mean, I couldn't even see shoulder to shoulder. It, I could see the would have been the left shoulder, but I couldn't I couldn't even see the right. And and uh, and it it looked almost like it was having to tilt its head down as it was looking in and um it, it had to be at least eight foot tall and you know hunting and, and growing up around cattle and everything i'm i'm thinking five over 500 pounds 550 it was it was massive it was it was a absolute it was a monster it was not it wasn't no happy skunk ape it, it was it did i could just feel it had bad intentions I I don't I've I've tried my whole life to try and rationalize this and make it all fit, and it don't you know I mean it it does but you it it's still there's so many questions, and uh, so we we end up moving from there into the closest little town. It's a uh, out tell you it's Bradley Junction. It's nothing. It's just a, a low spot in the road, not a red light, no no nothing. It's just. I couldn't, I don't know how many people, it's it's just, it's just a little, you blink and you miss it. So we live right on the outskirts of this town and we have prowlers all the time. I just, I I never put two and two together, but it was always a black guy. And you know, my oldest brother said, there's a black guy looking in the window again. They'd grab his BB gun and, you know, and never be able to find nobody. I just, I think that's all very, very strange (laughs) that I, it's, you know, people talk about them following you home and we moved, it was probably only 15 miles to this town, but it was right, the woods were probably a quarter of a mile away. And it, and we were right on the edge of the town. It would have been, you know, palmettos and and a, a, a couple open fields, and it could have been right there at the trailer we were living in. Yeah, I always laugh when That's, when they say it's a black guy. You know, everything gets blamed on the black guy. You know how many times I've heard it's a black guy <laughs> looking in the window down in like... Texas or Alabama or Georgia, it's it was always a black guy. And in 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 rural Florida, my dad used to practice shooting. He w- he would shoot. He smoked camel cigarettes, and he would shoot the hump off of a camel cigarette pack from like do, the, pacing it off like they do on the westerns. Nobody would be coming looking in our window if they knew us. That was it. Just it it don't make sense. But I listen to your show all the time, and I say, holy crap, because it's something that I experienced. And that we just chalked it up to just normal, you know, it's a prowler. Uh, somebody was just playing a joke, knocking on the door. Or somebody, you didn't hear nobody jiggle that door handle. You know, it just, 
just stuff. And, and I you know, try to rationalize all the stuff and put it all together and try to, to get it to fit. And it, it's still just, there's so many puzzles about everything. It just, it's, I went my whole life thinking I was about half crazy until now listening to your show. I, it's been like therapy because I, I realize, you know, there's people going through this. It's real. It, it's, it's real. And I, I'm, I'm not losing my mind because <laughs> I mean, I, I still got, I've still got things going on and I just, I can't explain it. it, it why me? I don't, I, I just don't understand that, but I've read some of the, the, the Indian myths that they say, if you, if you look, if you stare into its eyes, that you're, you're bonded for life and, and stuff like that. And I, I, I hate even the thought of that, but it, I, it makes me wonder. I just don't know. Yeah. Um, and I want to get to, uh, when you talk to your, your preacher, about stuff you were researching, yeah. but there was a time when um, you were, I think you were, what, 14 and you were hunting? Tell us about that with yeah, your dad. No, we, we were, yeah, um, my, my mom and my real dad got divorced and my stepdad come into our life and he was, he's a, he's a great man. He's a, he's a, uh, he used to, he's special forces. He used to, he used to train escape evasion. Uh, he was in Korea and he trained guys for Vietnam. He's, he's a great, good, solid man. No nonsense. And, uh, we raised cattle and he worked at the phosphate mines. And then in the evenings and on the weekends, we would fish, uh, commercial fish for catfish and tilapia. And, uh, we were actually fishing illegal. You're not allowed to trap in pits. So we were trespassing on this phosphate mine land in Pinecrest, which is a little town that's adjacent. Uh, I guess it's 20 miles away from where all this, the ranch activity was. And, uh, but it's the same patch of woods, basically. So we get out there like 2.30 in the morning, and it's a, uh, there's, there's, there's a moon. It's, it's bright enough to see, and as we get pulled up next to the pit, we're sneaking out through here, you know, in the four-wheel drive truck, just, just making our own way, easing through the woods, and we get up next to the pit. And the traps are floating. They're so full of channel cats. I mean, and, you know, he's, he's like, oh, Lord, look at that. Man, look at all that money. You get, look at them fish. All them traps are floating. And we throw the boat in the water real quick, and he said, hey, there's no room for you. It's just a little 10-foot John boat. So there's no room for you and all these fish. You have to wait here. So I got, he goes on out there. I grab my fishing pole, and I start wandering around the edge of the bank, throwing, throwing a worm everywhere I find a little spot in the reeds. And as I get a little bit further away from the truck, I hear sticks breaking. I, I figured I was pushing a cow. You know, maybe it was bedded down. I, I stirred it, and I'm, I, so I'm just pushing on down around the edge of the, the pit. So I pay attention, notice, you know, heads on a swivel, look and listen, you know, finally ease up, and I ease on down the next little spot, and I throw, and it starts busting bigger stuff, making a lot louder noise. I'm like, well, that, you know, I'm thinking that must be several cows. And as I get, as I'm looking, I realize there's a, there's a big stand of old growth pines, you know, big ones. And, uh, and in front of it's myrtle bushes that are like eight, 10 foot tall. And, uh, it's like 40 yards from me. So I look and it settles down. So I go to throw the, and as soon as I, cast as soon as i released the button and cast this worm the something just something went nuts it 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 was like it grabbed a 10 foot tall tree and it was behind the myrtle bushes and it was just thrashing back and forth everything was going nuts and i i couldn't make it out but i i saw something up in the trees and and all of a sudden it just it started going whoa 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 I mean, loud. And I don't know how my dad didn't hear it. He, he couldn't have been over 100 yards away from me out in the water. He heard none of this. And I dropped fishing pole, ran back to the truck, jumped in, locked the door, curled up in a ball on the floor, and was just petrified, petrified. And, and when he came back to – when he came back, and I never heard him come back up. And I'm just – I'm like beside myself. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought I was dead. I just had this thing's gonna eat me. I just had that feeling, and 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 uh, he opens the door when he does. You know, he has to unlock it, and he, I'm in the I'm curled up on the floor. He's like, well, "What are you doing?" I said, "There's something over there." He's like, 
where? I said, right there in that stand of trees. There's something over there. I was, it's over there, and it's making a weird noise. Like, it's, it's not, it's not, he said, it's a cow. I said, no, it's not a cow. There, I'm telling you, there's something over there. And so, you know, he walks over there about halfway, and I'm, I'm watching him. He's standing there looking. All of a sudden, he, as he's walking, he stops and gets, she kind of gets a funny posture about him, and then all of a sudden he says, damn it, boy, help me with these fish. We ain't got time for this shit. <laughs> so we grab the fish and, and go on, and uh, that was the second actual encounter. I didn't, I didn't really see anything. I can't tell what I saw in the trees, so, you know, I don't know, but I know, I know what's in the woods, and I know the noise that it makes. I grew up farming, ranching, hunting, fishing. I'm pretty much an outdoorsman, and I know the noises, and I know, I know what to – I know what's out there, and there's that's not that's not a noise or an action I've ever seen from anything. I've heard that before. What you're describing, that whoa, and it sounds like a guy trying to imitate a gorilla is what it sounds like. Uh, but it's a, louder. A big guy. A very big guy. Yeah, a it's big, it's a, a lot louder than a normal human would do it. But I've heard that before. And it, it like it 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 actually shook me. It really does shake you. I mean, when you hear them vocalize, it does rattle you a lot. Um, and we can get to some of the other weird things that happened to you. But later in life, you started researching this, started looking into it, and you went to your preacher. Tell me about that conversation you had with him. Yeah, he was a, he was just a his old country preacher, but he he was a church starter. He would he would start churches up all over this area. Uh, in Central Florida, and he was a great man of God. He still has, a, he's been he's been gone years now, but he's still spoken highly of. Um, but he was had a lot of wisdom, and uh, I, I I started going to church, and uh, I got born again, and and all of the seeing this and and reading everything I could get my hands on my whole life. As soon as I learned how to read, anytime I got the choice of what I was, I was reading something about Bigfoot, UFO, paranormal. I was trying to, I just had to. I need answers, and it got I got in I got mixed up in some things and thinking well that if this creature's out there then God God didn't create that, and even though I had a big Christian influence growing up, and my whole family parents you know my brother's a preacher my uncle's a preacher I just doubted you know I just doubted and I got mixed up in you know mind travel and telepathy and all that silly stuff so I finally got my heart right. And I just poured myself into the Bible, and the, you know, I started reading things and seeing things about you know Genesis six, and and the properties of you know the devil and what his powers are and you know what he's truly in charge of, and and uh, I just started studying that and and uh, the, the giants and and uh, the Nephilim, the fallen ones, all that, and uh, some odd things started happening to me. Uh, like street lights would go out. It just weird stuff, lights flickering, nothing real spooky that couldn't be explained away. But it, it kind of got me nervous, so I, I talked to the preacher and I said, I, you know, I was telling him, I said, this, I know you believe, you know, we have to believe that, you know, God's a spirit must be worshipped in spirit. So there's other spirits. He said, absolutely. You know, what are you, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I've been researching, you know, angels, and uh, I said, good, good and bad. And he said, stop it. And he turned around. And he, he glared at me. It, I mean, he was. He had, I had, he talked to me like I was a son. He, he just glared at me. He said, "Stop it! You study what's real. You don't know enough about the Bible yet to be messing with that junk." And he said, "You'll you'll get yourself messed up. Stop it! Don't mess with that." And uh, I said, "Well, I saw something when I was a kid, and I can't. I just can't. I'm just curious. I, it's bothered me my whole life, and I need to. I need to. I need answers." And he said, "Let me tell you a story. This is what you. This this is what you could be doing." Let me tell you a story. So I, back years ago, when I was up in, in uh, north of here, I, I had a young couple that come to church. To, you know, they grew up in church together, and they got married, and then they got out of church. I never seen them, and all of a sudden, my phone rang in the middle of the night, and it was it was them. Preacher, come quick. We got there's demons. There's something going on here. Please come help us. Please come quick. And he said, so I jumped up, got dressed, and, and drove out there. And they lived way out, and it's a preserve now called. Tenerock, but they lived way back in the back, back before it was a preserve in a, in a trailer. And he said, when I got out of my car, he said, you could hear, he said, it was like a banshee screaming. He said, you could hear screams and all kind of ruckus and stuff just going nuts. And he said, I could feel it when I got out of my car. And uh, he said, I walked up there and walked in the house and 
He said, I looked around for just a minute, and he said, y'all been down in Satan's camp, hadn't you? You done drugged something back here to the house. And he said, so I commenced to pray. And he said, I was stomping and yelling and, and telling them they didn't have no business there. These kids belong to Jesus. And, and he, said, he, said, he said, I had to pray hard for 10 minutes. And he said, all of a sudden it stopped. He said, but they were, it was slapping the walls and jiggling door handles and scratching screen and, and screaming. And, uh, and he said, that's the kind of stuff you'll get mixed up in right there. And he said, you don't, you don't want that. Just stay away from all that stuff. And see, he had no idea. That was, those, that was skunk apes. He, and he attributed it to paranormal. But what I think is amazing is that by his word that I trust, you can invoke the name of Jesus, and it stopped. I guess maybe if you're prayed up, <laughs> I don't, you know what I mean. I, I don't, I don't know how that works, but I do. That's that's kind of comforting to know. But it also makes me wonder now, what exactly are these things? Yeah, it's interesting. He went out to the house and he thought that uh, it was demons, you know. And I've I've heard that from other people too. They're they're not sure if it's these things or if it's demons because the the walls are getting hit, the doors are being you know, jiggled like they're tr- something's trying to come in, and then they'll hear it outside. You know, screaming uh, the god awful scream that they do. So I could see why he would say that. I could definitely see you know why he would feel that way. That is interesting about him praying and it stopping. Yeah, makes you wonder yeah, if it was I, him yelling inside the house or what they took as yelling. I don't or- know. He he. I had a bone disease, and I don't believe in healing. I believe that God heals who he will. I don't believe in healings, and I, I just don't think anybody has that power or they'd go clean out a hospital. That's just my personal belief. But I do know that I had a bone disease, and I was, I was supposed to die at, when I was 12. And he came into the hospital and prayed for me, and I'm perfectly healthy. I'm, I'm supposed to be crippled, and I've, I've wrestled martial arts, hunt, fish, round up cattle. I'm, I, did, I, I work I physically. I'm, I'm in perfect health. 55 years old, and I was, I was supposed to die. And I, that's the man that laid hands and prayed on me. I just, there's just something about him. And I, it may be, he may have had that power that other people don't have because I've heard other people say that it didn't work. I just, I don't know. I just, it's kind of comforting to me to know. <laughs> but it, it, then again, it's all kind of confusing because, I, I mean, what are they? I mean, what, it's, it's, it's just, it's strange. It's the, the whole you know, trying to put all this together throughout my life and the different things that have happened and, and still, still are happening. It's just really confusing to me of, of how, how does it all, how do we put it all together? And that's why I've read, you know, I was telling you, I've read the book of Jasher, the Epic of Gilgamesh, uh, book of Enoch, the, the Bible. I've done different studies on everything I could imagine and, and read the Bible, you know, cover to cover many times. And, and I, I think, they're here for a reason. I don't think God created them, but I think they're here for a reason. I think I honestly think it may be something to do with with the Nephilim. Uh, I don't I don't know how it came. You know, I I do know there's a lot of evidence that when Joshua and Caleb uh, conquered the land of Canaan, they didn't kill all those giants. They ran a lot of them out, and there's a a lot of evidence that they showed up from some of the Native American uh, stuff I've read, that that they showed up over here at a certain time. They, they weren't here, but then all of a sudden they were here, and the Natives started having trouble with them. And I've read a couple of places that it kind of correlates to about the same time frame that that would have happened. And, I mean, I don't know that for a fact, it, but it just seems odd. that It seems like we have more of them here than other places. Yeah, it is bizarre. I, I don't, it is bizarre, and, and I think you can go to the old text and start reading things. I mean, I think it's part of searching for answers, you know what I mean? And um, mm-hmm. there is weird texts, you know, that talk about a lot of strange things that sometimes you feel like, oh, is this related? Is this not related? I've done that, too, so I know exactly what you're doing. And and you you read all this, and you kind of—I kind of get it kind of nailed down a little bit. I'm okay with it. But then— up until a few months ago when I found your show, I, you know, I'd be out at the pasture building fence. You know, we, we've, me and my dad, I've always helped, the, you know, it's like family business. And I'd, I'd drive a truck for a living, but on the weekends, if anything was going on, I'd go help, you know, round up cows or building fence or, you know, just, you know, just ranch work. And I'd be out there by myself hundreds of times, you know, all day long and be building fence near a tree line and hear, hear somebody whistle. Like, what? Or, or call my name. Just 
and just and no, I heard it. You know, just sitting there and think for a minute. Now, did I hear that? What, what? What? And go over there and look and say, what? Is there? What? You know, stand just walk up to the wood line. You know, there's, there's nothing in there that I could see, and never had a feeling of. You know, normally when I normally when there's been something around, I I can kind of feel it. it I mean, you can. But I do know there's there's been like four times in my life that I knew. I knew I was in danger. There was something there. I could feel it. The hair on the back of my neck stood up. Mouth went dry. Heart pumping peanut butter. Get out of here. You're in danger. And and uh, it, it wouldn't happen like that. Just confusing, like pestering kind of stuff. And uh, that, that's the kind of things that will make you, you know, you're out there by yourself. You're like, all right, am I getting heat stroke? I mean, am I losing my mind here? But, but now I think it's, because it's the same patch of woods. I mean, it's you know, thirty, forty miles stretch, but it's it's the same patch of woods that most of all this stuff has happened in. You know, separated by roads, but it's mostly rural. You know, either mine, phosphate mine, or, or reclaimed land and pasture and woods. That's all. They could travel the the waterways all through there. And, and now looking down the like on the BFRO and some of my own research, there's been sightings all over the place. And 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 I think like I believe only like maybe 30 percent are reported if that yeah i would say it's a and, lot uh, less than that yeah yeah I, I think you've heard you say like 10 percent, but i i mean i don't know man I, I, like the next thing that happened i get off work like noon on a saturday it's hunting season and i live like you know i'm not far from a management area so i i run home grab my gun three stand throw it in the truck haul butt go up and just drive and park and then just walk. I walk, find me a nice little pine tree and uh in this little thicket. It's not that big around as you get up top. So I'm I'm up there and you know and I had a long week so I'm I'm in my tree stand and the wind's blowing and it's kinda of rocking me and I fall right to sleep. I wasn't in I, you know probably wasn't in it sitting there thirty minutes and I was asleep. And I woke up out of a dead sleep scared to death. I wasn't dreaming. I just it something it just woke me up. I was I was petrified. And I felt something watching me. And I grabbed my binoculars, and I'm looking and looking, and I look and look. And I'm, I mean, I, I was feeling like my, I didn't even, I didn't even think to hurry up and get down. And all of a sudden, it hit me that if I didn't get out of there, I was, it was going to be dark before I got back to my truck. And uh, I was afraid my legs wasn't going to work. I was that scared for no reason. I'm armed. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I would shoot, I would shoot something. I, it, I, I know I would. I, I, I don't think, I, I think they're evil. And and I or something about them, it just just the fact that it it pisses me off that I've been you know had to deal with this my whole life. I would I would probably shoot one just out of meanness if if I you know if it, if it was in front of me. And I I'm not I'm not a scaredy cat, but I was petrified. And I, it makes me wonder if that infrasound stuff or the 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 woo woo telepathy stuff. It, it makes me wonder if there's something to that. Because I know I could feel it. There was one. There was one there, and there's been several sightings out there. It's uh, you probably it's the Green Swamp Management Area. There's been several sightings out there. I ran. I I I, I probably skinned all the bark off of that tree getting down, and I I ran. I ran back. I ran the full way back to my truck and couldn't get could get out of there quick enough. But then again, I, you know, I just kind of I'm not going to let it keep me out of the woods. So I just kind of put it in the back of my mind, and and uh, so you know, I still you know, I still I I. Last hunting season, I, I slept three nights in a two-man tent right by myself up in Fargo, Georgia. You know, seven miles out in the woods on the hardwood, right, right by myself, and uh, never had, never got the heebie-jeebies. Never seen or smelled or nothing. Even with pick and play with the coyotes at night, yelping and bringing them in closer. And but uh, uh, one night, uh, something I, I I I put it off as like the tent blew and brushed my arm, but something brushed my arm and woke me out of a dead sleep and I, I I rolled I left my gun where I could just reach right straight down and grab it and I rolled over and was and was ready to ready to fire and just uh, out of out of habit and uh, or out of fear expecting something but I got there was nothing out there so I just just kind of let it go as the wind and uh so I, I'm not I'm not a fraidy cat I just I think there's something that they do to you with I just think they can and somehow they instill that fear, and, yeah. and maybe it's because I had that encounter where I I looked at it. I, I mean, I, I don't know. 
I don't know. I just I can't explain it. But yeah, it could um, be a lot of times when people have encounters like this, they um, uh, I, I think they're more keen to it, you know. And it, and I can speak from my own experience. A lot of times when you're out there, you just get a weird feeling like it's time to leave. You haven't seen anything. Yeah. You haven't heard anything. And you just get that almost like the same feeling as when you had an encounter before kind of rushes through your body and you get that weird, odd sixth sense that picks up that says, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. There's, there's been several times that I've been down building fence and, and it's an hour, you know, from where I used to live, it's an hour down there. And then, through the gates and back in there and to get all set up, go to work, you know, and, and get the feeling. It just come, it just, it's, it just comes over you. And I just, I've, and I've had just load everything up and go home. I'm not stay. I just couldn't, I couldn't make myself stay. You know, you try to talk to yourself, you're just being scared. You just stop it, stop it. It's your mind. You're, you're overthinking things. And, but I've, I've had to tell my dad several times, he calls, say, how much you get done? I say, not a thing. You don't have me get down. <laughs> You drove all the way down there and didn't do nothing. So, yep. Yeah, I think a lot of times it's good to listen to your gut like that. I think that's something internal that we have, and I think it's good to listen to your insides telling you, leave, leave, leave. Um, There was a time where you had talked to a friend of yours, and I thought this encounter was pretty interesting. You went up and you were... Uh, wanted to hear what happened to him, and you were going to tell him what happened to you. Yeah. What, what did he tell you? What tell me about that whole situation? I was, I was at a, a minor league ball game, and uh, in uh, the town right here in Lakeland, watching the the minor league baseball team play, and uh, <clears throat> he was the bus driver <clears throat> that drove them all over the state to you know during their their season, and uh, he had been a truck driver earlier in this. And he was good friends with my father-in-law. And I told my father-in-law this about, I didn't tell him about all the straight stuff. I just told him that I saw something. And, you know, all the jokes, hoo-hoo-ha, the belly laughs. And uh, so we're sitting there, and he said, hey, that guy right there is the bus driver. And he, you need to talk to him. He saw something down on Alligator Alley years ago, back before I-75 was put in, back when that was the only way to get across the state. He saw he saw something down there. You need to go, go talk to him. I was like, all right. So I walk up to him and say, how you doing? I'm I'm Tim. I'm so and so's uh, son-in-law. Uh, he told me that you had a story about something you saw down on Alligator Alley years ago. And he said, just as quick as I could get, he said, "F you and on." <laughs> I know what I saw, and I'm sick of all this crap. I don't. I know what I saw. I don't care if anybody believes me. I know what I saw, and I say, man, what well, easy? I said I saw something, and I've never talked to anybody, that, anybody else ever in my life that's seen anything and in person. And I said I'd, I'd like to hear your story. I'd, I'd like to swap stories with you. And he said, okay. So he's cutting across Alligator Alley, and back then it's I think it was 80, 80 miles across there. Like when you leave Naples up to get over to where the the metro or or the town back then it was way across it was just desolate nothing a two-lane road alligators and snakes and uh there was a stop sign out there uh i can't remember the the hello chi there's a stop it was just the the only stop sign he said come up to the stop sign in the middle of the night and there's a uh a car like a bigger the way i don't know he's just a bigger the bigger old heavy cars was stopped there with the doors open and the headlights on and uh, it was just sitting there, and it looked like it had front end damage. So he's thinking that they had wrecked, and he so he grabbed his he stopped and grabbed his flashlight, and he's looking in the weeds, you know, looking around and calling, "Hey, is anybody everybody all right? Is anybody out here?" And uh, he said, I, "You know, I look around, I can't find nobody." He said, "So I really don't know what's going on." He said, "I, I just figured I'd go to the next phone and call and report it to the police." He said, so I get back in the truck, and he said, as soon as I get in the truck, he said, I get ready to put it in gear. He said, this thing come out of the woods. And he said, it ran. And he said, it was pissed off. It ran and ran straight up to his truck, and he said, it balled its fist up and yelled and went, ah, and hit the hood of his uh, semi-truck. And uh, he said, it damaged my hood. He said, but what I thought, he said, I just couldn't believe it. He said, I was looking it straight in the eyes while I'm sitting in the cab of my truck. It was it was that big. He said this thing was massive, and he said it was just about as wide as it was tall. And uh, 
he said it was pissed off and he said i couldn't get out of there he said i just started grabbing gears he said it, it must have moved out of the way i, I don't or call said i was so scary he said but i got to the next place where there was a phone he said i pulled up there and when i got got there the people that were in that car were there on the phone he said that they had come up as they were coming up to that stop sign that thing ran out in front of them and they hit it and when they got out to check because they thought it was a bear when they got out to check that the other one came out of the woods and attacked their vehicle and so he he said i'm assuming that that maybe that was a female or or a you know, young one or something he said but the the other bigger one was pissed and he said it attacked their car and while it was attacking their car another vehicle come up and it run off in the woods real quick and they jumped in the car with them and those people took them to the phone and he said uh i said wow that's that's just crazy i said i've never heard anything like that he said check the papers it was in every paper he said i checked he was in every paper i looked in all in that whole area the next day he said there were people out in the rural areas reporting that a, a skunk acre some kind of a creature had attacked you know tearing up the stuff on their porches and and one thing said that uh one of them picked up a washing machine that was full of clothes off somebody's back porch and slung it like 30 feet out into the yard and uh just tearing things up and screaming and, and raising cane all over that place uh, down there, and he said, "I've looked. I, I can't find anything, but I've, I've tried to look in some of the old, you know, what I can find online, and I, I can't find anything. I don't, I don't know, but very interesting, very interesting. And I, and you could tell, you know, when you're talking to somebody, and you can, you can look, you can look, and and when they're scared, at some point while they're talking, you'll see, you'll see the fear. If they're telling you the truth, you'll see that same fear. You can tell when somebody's feeding you a line. I, the dude was, the dude, it scared him." Just like when I talk about it, my, I get my hand, every time I tell it, I get the hair on my arm stands up and back. And I, I get, I could just, my chest gets tight. It's, it just scared, it's, it's scared the crap out of me. That story is fascinating though. The behavior, you know, they hit one and another one comes out and it's pissed. And I, I've had encounters that were close to that on the show. Um, one guy had hit one. I forget where he was coming out of. He was coming out of, he was parting late at night and he, came peeling out and uh he hit a small one he said it reminded him of a like a small monkey and as he's slowing down something from the tree line roared at him and then he was driving he actually had his window down he was driving and he could hear it keeping pace with the car and uh, he didn't know what was going on he was completely lost as far as what was going on or what he just hit and he's like i didn't really get a chance to stop and take a look at this thing because something else was in the tree line screaming at me and so you hear stuff like that. You know, I think that encounter is really fascinating. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you, I know there's a lot of things going on and around your property now, and I know you're not far from the area, but um, and I would I would caution you to be careful. I know it's mainly vocalization it's, is what you're hearing around your property. Uh, what do you think that Sasquatch is, Tim? What's your honest opinion? I know you kind of alluded to it earlier, but uh, if someone were to ask I, you, what, what is it? What would you say? I, Every time I think I got it nailed down, I, I just, I don't know. To be honest, with everything I've read, in order for me to try and rationalize and make it fit into my belief system, which I'm, you know, I think, I think I'm close. I think that they're going to have something to do with the end times punishments uh, in the book of Revelation. And I think they're, I think they're basically a, maybe a chimera, uh, Maybe they don't have a soul, and maybe, I, I don't know, or maybe some of them are demonic possessed. But I do know just the fear that it instills like that. That's not, that's not, a, natural, that's not a natural thing for, for it, something to be able to put fear into you like that. That's not a natural thing for somebody that's not really scared of, it, of things, you know. So I, I, there's, something, there's something spiritual there's a spiritual side to it. I can't put my finger on it. I I would if I if I had if 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 some if one comes at me, I'm going to have a big taxidermy bill. But I'm not I'm not going to hesitate. I don't. I just I think I think they're bad news. I think they're bad news. And I don't I don't ever want to see another one. And I wish to God I'd never seen. I wish to God nothing like this had ever happened to me. Yeah, it is an interesting take. There's one comment you made in there that um, about the the fear. And the fear is unnatural. I mean, you come across a black bear, you don't have that type of fear. You come across a cougar, you don't have that type of fear. I mean, you're, you you can be a scared, scared and afraid, but this is like a whole different level. Respect. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I have a healthy respect for wild animals. You know, alligators. I mean, I've I've done. I've I'm I've you know I'm a hunter. Country, you know, I've I've experienced quite a bit of stuff. You know, around, I've been around some of the meanest bulls. You ever you know you'd ever and cows you'd ever and you just have a healthy respect. You don't fear them. That put fear in me, and I didn't even the one time I didn't even see it, and then I was scared. I'm telling you, I, I it's almost had tunnel vision. I was so scared. And I, that's not natural. There's something strange about these things. And and the, the stuff that's going on at the house, I I didn't realize that I was probably messing with some kind of tree markers gathering the pine cones. And uh I'm not going back out there unarmed and I'm not I had my girlfriend with me at the time. I'm not I'm not taking her back out there. But um I've just started talking to a guy that I met on the, the fan page on, on Facebook and uh I'm trying I'm gonna decide over the next couple of weeks if he, if he and I he seems like a good enough guy that won't come down and pester him or cause any trouble. But the, the, the curiosity is killing me, Wes. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to see another one, but I, it's right there. I pass I, I can see within, it's a hundred yards back in the woods where I, the, the, the tree breaks and uh, the thing run at me and stopped like 20 yards from me. Right. And, and then immediately something started breaking baseball size limbs, like 10 foot up in the air, just out of, you know, through the woods where I couldn't see it. And, uh, there's, there's something out there and I could feel it. I could actually, I felt it. And I told her, I told her, I said, just, she said, what was that? I said, probably a pig, but just, we're done. We're done. Just ease real slowly. Just get in front of me and ease on out of here. And, uh, uh, don't, don't look back. I, I, I just, just don't run. No matter what happens, don't run. And, uh, that's it. I'm not, I'm not going back unarmed. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't I, blame you. I, I do. I, it's. I'm not going out there at night, but I. I want to. I just. I guess I'm. I don't know. The, the curiosity is killing me. Yeah, and it does. And, and I, under, I, I, I understand why you felt that way. I think that a lot of times in it, situations, even after an encounter, um, I think most people would say, "I'd like to see it again from a distance. I'd like to see it again from." Yeah. Uh, so there is that curiosity. I understand that. The perfect descript- descriptive term would be double-minded. I'm absolutely double-minded. I don't want to ever experience again, but I, I, it's killing me. I, I, I want to, I want to pull my truck down in down that dirt road and go out there every time I pass by it. I want to, I want to, I just want, I, I want to see. I want, I want to, I want to get a better look where I'm not scared. But I know, I know once I see it, I'm gonna, it'll probably be terrifying. But I went down to the, I don't know if you've seen the footage, the Mayaka skunk ape footage. I went, I went down to that, where that footage was taken. Have you seen that, that footage at Mayaka State Park? Yeah, I have. Yeah. I went there and, uh, I went to that spot. I didn't tell the person that was with me what I was doing, but I went out and I walked out there. There's like two and a half foot of water out there. It's, you can't walk like that. If somebody was in a suit, he's stupid in Florida especially that area of Florida, everybody's got a gun, two guns loaded and we'll shoot you and we'll shoot that. It's, that's just stupid. It don't make sense for that to be someone in a suit. And, and, and there's gators everywhere down there and snakes. That's, it just don't make sense. I went there and, and I, I think, I think it is what I think, I think he got footage. I think it's a, a creature. And, and then I went to the, the snack bar I'm eating, and two of the people that worked there were sitting there. And I said, uh, "How y'all doing?" Just struck up conversation. I said, "So, uh, either you guys ever see anything out here you can't explain?" And this one girl turned to me real quick and said, "You mean like a skunk egg?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "I had to open up this past summer, and I had to get here early in the morning." And she said, "When I pulled up, I, I pulled up right out there, and I backed into that spot." And she said, "My lights were shining under this, and it's a it's a stilt building. It's up on like it's like eight ten foot up off." It's right on the water in a flood area. You see a lot of that down here. <clears throat> it's on, on telephone poles, basically. It's a stilt, stilt building. She said it was standing right under here. And she said it, had to, it was leaned down. It couldn't stand straight up. And she said it was big and it was black. And she said, I hit my bright lights. And she said, I was scared. I, I didn't know what to do. And she said, all of a sudden, it just turned and walked straight. And dis- she said it took three steps and it was gone, disappeared in those woods right there. And you could see the look on her face. She was petrified, just telling the story. When I hear something or see something that's close by, and there's several, there's been, you know, you did the Christian retreat show. That's a mile through the pasture from my house. 
Um, they're like three miles straight due northeast. There's been several sightings across Highway 62. And the deputy in the BFRO report said, yeah, we get this same report out here a lot. You know, it's, in, it's on the, the – the, that says that on the BFRO website. Um, on I-75 between Bradenton and Sarasota, once crossed the road there several times. And this is just the people that report it. You know, so there's Lettuce Lake. That's right. That's within 10 miles of me down there. There's, there's activity down there. There's something, there's something in those woods, and I and I hear it sitting up. We got a, you know, I live in a nice house in a gated community. I got a pond, you know, got a pond behind the house, but then three houses down is pasture, and then if you take a, a right at the at the fence, you could go 50 miles, and it's nothing but woods and rivers. And uh, there's there's something in those woods. I hear it. I've I've heard it at night several times, and I just don't, you know, I'm not at home a lot. I drive a truck. I'm gone a couple nights a week, and I. You know, my girlfriend, she thinks I've lost my mind. She don't want to know anything about it, but she's got a, I think she's got a, a healthy respect because I've, I've told her, I said, listen, do you hear that? That's not an owl. That's not a sick coyote. I said, listen to the end after these coyotes get done. Listen to this last coyote. <laughs> yeah. And so now she'll say, she'll say, you know, I, she'll call me. She'll say, I, I wish you were here. They were everywhere. I said, what? She said that it was over here in these woods and then across the pasture, and then you could hear one like a quarter mile away. They kept yelling back and forth at each other. I said, record it. She said, I don't want no part of this. This is you. <laughs> so yeah. There's activity. I'm not, I'm not telling, you know, I'm not telling people where, where it's at. I don't want no, I'm afraid they might know that I showed somebody and they might come up around my house. I, I, I'll do it myself if I, if I go out, you know, I may take someone, but I'm not a researcher. I just want to know. I don't want I don't want anything out of it. I, I just, I just need, it's like, I just need to know more. They're definitely out there in Florida, uh, Tim. I mean, I, I get tons of reports and from your general area too, as well. And I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, share what happened to you. You know, I know you're a truck driver and I, I get a lot of weird stories from truck drivers, non Bigfoot related. I mean, I've had UFOs to balls of light to uh, this rake creature, uh, Lion Man. I mean, I've heard all kinds of weird, weird stuff from uh, truck drivers. And I'm curious, it, what's the strangest thing you've seen when you're out truck driving? Um, I was uh, driving from Baltimore to Reading, Pennsylvania. And the only real, you know, the, the easy interstate way is up through Philly. And that was just, that didn't work for me. So I'd pulled out my map and found me a side road and I'm fully loaded. I just come off the weekend, have my coffee. I'm wide awake, you know, rested, ready, raring to go. And, uh, um, I get, I get cutting, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of the roads are hairpins. So you got to kind of ease out because you got to take up the other lane when you come around some of these systems. It's probably, it's a truck road, but it's probably not a good truck road. So and it's rural, and it goes through Amish country. So it opens up and kind of flattens out after the hills. And uh, at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, I guess. Um, yeah, it would have to be because that's from the time I started. So the road, it was, it was kind of odd. The, the road went straight, and then it, it was like a sinkhole, an old pond or something. And the road dipped around to the left and curved and then come back up and picked right straight up and went across. Like if you were looking, you know, if you were kneeling down on the ground, you wouldn't be able to see that it curved down into that thing. You looked like you think the road went straight across. It was just a perfect little bowl type thing that you, you went into. And there was a little mist in that bowl. And it just looked odd. So I, I'm downshifting. I get, you know, I'm doing downshifting. And, and plus it's a, like a 35 mile an hour curve. You know, I'm, I'm downshifting into it. And, and uh, all of a sudden I look and about half, three quarters of the way through the curve, it's, it's not even maybe 300 yards long the whole until it road picks back up again. There's a deer standing in the center lane at a 45 degree angle facing away from me. And, uh, so I brake, engine brake and I'm, I'm getting down slower because you don't, you can't ever trust which way they're going to go. And they'll, you know, you hit one, you're, you're done. You know, a lot of times it disables a vehicle. So I'm, I'm gearing, I'm, I'm downshifting. And all of a sudden, as I get up, you know, within like 20 yards, I'm doing five or 10 miles an hour. Now this deer's not moving. And, uh, as I get up to it, it stands up on its hind legs and turns around and it was a woman. And 
she it was she was two and a half foot from me, looking out my window, and she had this look. On, she had, I didn't see any whites of her eyes. She it, she was not. It wasn't a hag. It was it, she just. It was just a normal woman. There was nothing exceptionally different about her. It, she was just a normal woman, and but she didn't have any whites of her eyes, and the, she had almost like a smirk, like I've been expecting you, and. Wes, I I know now why some trucks wreck and nobody can explain. I know some of the stories about the sirens and being, ships being lured onto rocks and just craziness. The stories you hear that you think, oh, bull crap, that dude's smoking dope. You know, I, there ain't no way. I know for I'm stone cold, sober, drug free, I, I, I saw what I can only think it has to be a shapeshifter or. What, what do you, the Wendigo things that y'all talk about? Something, it's something, and it gave it's it it. I was yelling at the top of my lungs. Jesus, please help me. Please, this can't be real. Please, please don't. This I'm. I am. Am I going crazy? God, you have to help me. Help me. And and I, it scared me so bad. I gritted my teeth, and my neck muscles cramped, and I got tunnel vision. I almost passed out, which is why I say I know why. I, trucks wreck mysteriously sometimes i i just i don't know if that's I, it just makes me wonder but as i went by she had that weird look just looking up at me and i'm about to pull the gear shift off i'm i'm so scared i i, I i'm and about to pass out and i i feel I, I bring myself back out of it and as i look in my mirror, she just turns and starts walking. She she walked and she was walking on the the white line. On the she turned, come from the inside, and she in the middle center lane. She was on the outside and was just like walking behind, like out for a walk. Just just walking, and I, I my brother's a preacher. I called him in the middle of the night. Woke him up. I'm I'm like, pray for me. Pray. I'm 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 losing my mind. What, what is it? And he's like, man, what have you, what have you been doing? What, what, you know, you, you, you better get your heart right. You better, you know, you need to, you need to pull over and pray. I'm like, I'm not pulling over. <laughs> I'm not stopping. I'm not, this, uh, this truck ain't stopping until I get to the city. <laughs> I'm not yeah. stopping. I don't blame and, you, man. <laughs> did, did it, uh, were the eyes just black? Is that when you say no black. lights? Just, no, just black. And, and, you know, I've, I've read several things uh, about that, and and I've read I read behind an old preacher man that a lot of people think he's a kook, but he he researched into a lot of this stuff, and he was a genius. He spoke like eight languages. His name was uh, Peter Ruckman, and he wrote a book, uh, Black is Beautiful, and he done a commentary on, well, he done the full commentary on the Bible, but the best one was Genesis, um, and he speaks about the Nephilim and some of these things, and he he, he wholeheartedly believes. You know, and explains it, explains and, and tells some of these stories about people seeing stuff that from from Christian people he he trusted he trusted that they you know they weren't just telling you know something just to be talking. And uh, so I've I've heard and I've read and tried to read. I, what I what I can't figure out is why me. I just don't I don't want I don't want I don't want to know this stuff. I yeah, I'd, I'd be list, real, brother. I'd be real <laughs> curious to know what you what you actually saw because, uh, you know, was it this skinwalker, this witchcraft that these Native Americans talk about? And I'll tell you something interesting about skinwalkers. And I'm not saying it was a skinwalker; it could have been a demon or who knows what it was. Uh, but when you really pin down most of these Native Americans, even some of these shaman, and you start bringing up skinwalkers, they avoid it like. You're going to give them cancer by talking about it. I mean, they will shut you down mm -hmm. and not discuss it one bit. Um, very few will. There's a couple that will talk about it. I think Brenda Harris was the first one that told me about it. And she was like, it's witchcraft. It's it's demonic. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's a real thing that goes on, but it's all witchcraft and demonic. Um, and she, and, but most of the natives won't. They won't even discuss it with you. They want, not, they want nothing to, t to do with it. Go, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, well, that, that's I don't I'm I don't mean to talk over your brother. I'm sorry. I uh, but one of the things that that I've always looked at is um, 
Adam lost the kingdom. He lost the keys of the kingdom when he fell. And they went to the devil. The devil couldn't offer Jesus this world if he didn't own it. How are you going to lie to God? Right? And he offered him these, the kingdoms of this world, if you just worship me. So they're his. And he has a certain amount of power that God gives him. And he mimics and imitates. He, he, tries, he imitates everything God does, only with a wicked twist. Um, and, you know, the story of Nebuchadnezzar, God changed him into a beast of the field. Feathers, claws, ate grass for seven years, but then restored him to his mind. That's basically what we consider lycanthropy. I think there's something to, I think there's something, I don't know, I don't know what it was. All I know is what I saw, and I try to rationalize it and read what I can, because I can't just say it didn't happen. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate you sharing it. I mean, I know you didn't really want to share it, and I asked you if you would, but um, it, there's a lot of, probably some of the most bizarre stories I've ever heard were from truck drivers. Um, weird creatures, weird things in the middle of the night when they're driving some of these back roads. And, I mean, yeah, your, this, yours is pretty mild compared to some of the other things I've heard from truck drivers that, I, aren't, that aren't big for I've me. Seen, I, there's, I've, seen, I've seen some really hilarious stuff, but... Um, uh, I mean, one of the things, one of the weirdest, creepiest things I've ever seen wasn't, there's nothing supernatural about it. I was making a delivery a restaurant and I was sitting there taking my break and I, I look and there's probably a thousand rats. They're climbing up a fence and then climbing into an oak tree. And then one by one, they're climbing out on a limb and they're dropping down one by one into the dumpster and their so, dumpster is full of rats and they're climbing out. It just looked like something off of a horror show, and I had to blink my eyes for a minute and think, that's the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> that was even almost creepier than the the, the deer chick. <laughs> yeah. No, that's bizarre, man. Well, keep your eyes and your ears open, and I really appreciate you coming yep. on and uh, sharing your encounter. And if anything else happens in the future, please let me know, will you? Yeah, I will. I will. Appreciate you, Wes. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. Please check out sasquatchchronicles.com. Until next time, everyone. This is my home.